broke, <laughs> struggling. All my friends looking at me, Tanya, bro, just go get a job. One good friend of mine sat me down one day after the mosque, bro. I think it's enough. Tanim Zaman, social media influencer. He focuses on halal businesses and property investing. What I want to tell Muslims is don't just aim to have a good job, aim to be a good employer. Mm. Why, why are we thinking small? We're all Muslim, but we all seem to have a very particular way of doing things. Mm -hmm. I guess I was searching. And I sat with the Salafis, I sat down with the Brelvis, I sat with the Sufis, I sat down with everyone. It didn't matter to me. If I can learn something from you, they'll benefit me. You know, where do you see in the whole spectrum? From a fake perspective, mm -hmm. Okay. What's your greatest fear? My greatest fear <coughs> would probably not doing enough. That's the only thing that will save me on the day of judgment. Day of judgment. Day of judgment. Day of judgment. Assalamu alaikum, brother Tanim Zaman. You're a serial entrepreneur, and obviously, you have been propagating business through the lens of Islam, which, I, uh, which I'm kind of big on as well. You have founded uh, Sequoia Homes, mm -hmm. an academy which is focusing on halal property business. And I, I'm just going to summarize what I have here, and then inshallah, we'll go, you know a little bit deeper into the kind of conversation as we move along. So you've studied um, BSc Economics at London School of Economics. Mashallah. Mashallah. Well done. Congratulations. Mashallah. That's something that I don't have. Um, and then you took a gap year and you started working in Deloitte to avoid what taking loans from university. Yeah, I took a gap year before going to uni. Yes. I, did. I was trying to figure out how do I get around. And the then... Of course, you have a passion for harnessing businesses that empower people, that help people, so social enterprises. You have co-founded four businesses, mashallah, and all of them are focusing on, I guess, ultimately mm. helping the ummah or, or people. Mm. You've been featured on BBC broadcast, um, uh, breakfast show, sorry, it's BBC breakfast show, BBC Asian Network, Revive FM, and so many other vlogs and podcasts and events. Mashallah, congratulations. We're, uh, it's a pleasure and honor to have you um, here in the studio with us uh, on Side by Side podcast. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah fikum, the pleasure is mine. <laughs> I've been waiting to meet you for a long time. Oh, I didn't know. You should have, <laughs> you should have <laughs> sent me a message or something. Um, now, this might kind of... Um, take you back a bit, but um, I guess let's start with a very loaded question, which is, what's your greatest fear? Ooh, my greatest fear <coughs> would probably not doing enough, not having anything to show for when it really matters. And why does that matter so much? Because that's, that's the only thing that will save me. That's the only thing that will save me on the day of judgment. Okay. If I don't have enough to show. Um, so that's probably what drives me to constantly try and do more and more and more and take too much on my plate is uh, that thing at the back of my head. I've been blessed so much with so many opportunities, so, um, so many skills, so many mentors, so many good people in my life. Am I doing enough? Where, where kind of, where, do, where were you born? Were yeah. you born here? I was born in Italy, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you? How, how did that happen? Why, well, how did Italy happen? <laughs> there's Bangladeshis everywhere you go. You can go to Libya, you'll find Bangladeshis. You can go to Belgium, you'll find Bangladeshis. So my father was one of the early Bangladeshis in migrating to Italy. Okay. So he was there in the early, uh, late 70s. Wow. So we thought Literally. only in Lon no, London no, is the no. only pe place people came There's, to. <laughs> I mean, London's probably the, the first and the best. Because mm -hmm. until the 90s, there wasn't that many Bangladeshis around. Okay. Uh, there wasn't. So is all. it safe to say then, um, I guess this is a probably pre prejudice or something, but are you Sileti or non Sileti? I'm actually a hybrid. My mom's side is Sileti. Okay. And my dad's side isn't. Okay. So I can roll both ways. Okay. Where Link is where is uh, father's side from? <laughs> Uh, Chittagong. Okay. That kind of like, you know, explains why Italy maybe, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, exactly. Even my mom's side, everybody's silly, but they uh, grew up in Chittagong. 
because my grandfather was an accountant in the port. Okay. Uh, in the port of Chitwa. Mashallah, mashallah. So you you were born in Italy. When did you migrate to the to the UK? Uh, we came in 2003. My mom sent me and my brother on a holiday okay. to visit my uncle because I have my mom's side of the family. We have quite a lot of family here. Obviously, the Sileti, so we yes, have a lot of family yeah. here. And we just went on this holiday, and uh, I was 12, my brother was 11, mm -hmm. and there was no return flight. It was just a one way. <laughs> well, what do you mean? What, was it a Ryanair flight or something? <laughs> That's or? it. Um, um, the plan was basically to send us over and get us used to basically oh, eventually kind of settling in. Oh, they kind of pre-planted, yeah. pre-kind of planned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, as soon as we landed, my uncle started telling us how wonderful the UK is and how good the schools are and this and that. And I was like, yeah, whatever, cool. And how old were you that time? I was uh, 12. Okay. 12, yeah. Very similar story mm. to mine. I mean, I was kind of yeah. um, shipped yeah. straight from Bangladesh to England, but at least you, you were kind of like, you know, from Europe to yeah. Europe, mm. which is uh, slightly probably easier. Yeah. But I came at the age of age of 11, uh, mashallah. Um, so you came to the UK at 12. That means you must have missed some of the kind of prime. I mean, m m all of the primary school. All primary, yeah. I came straight into year eight. Year eight. And how did yeah. that go? Horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't speak much English at all. Really? Terrible like, accent. What do you, like, is it because you were speaking Italian? Yeah, in Italy, actually, it, it, the Italians and the French, mm -hmm. they don't care about English. Yeah, they, I, know. They, I, I they, see they, that. I see that every time you go to a service yeah. station in France, like you could tell, like he understands, yeah. he knows what you're saying. They don't teach you very well in schools either. So my English was very poor when I came. Okay, Bas very basics, and obviously bad accent. I'm going to a boys' school. I'm the new kid. I'm getting bullied. It wasn't nice at what all. What school was it? If you don't mind. We went saying. to South London, so okay. it wasn't a good school. It wasn't a good. And what area. kind of what, what was the mix like in terms of students? Obviously, if if you're kind of in Tower Hamlets, you know like what you're yeah. getting Bengalis all across, which is great. In <laughs> for, that it was school, great for me. Yeah, in that school, it was probably seventy percent black, one percent Asian, the rest white. Wow, yeah, that was, <laughs> that must have been a very different hard. experience. It was hard. Did yeah. you get bullied? Yeah, from day one. Like seriously, like. Physical bully. One day mental got physical. Um, one day got physical. One day got physical. And how did you kind of? To be honest, I never heart? experienced something like that in Italy. In Italy, the vibe is different. Everyone's friendly. We have a small schools. Everybody knows each other. You know your local pharmacist. You know. Even now, if I go back, it's been nineteen years. If I go back to my area, people will recognize me and they will hug me. Whereas here we don't even know our neighbors. Wow, this is different th vibe. this is crazy. I mean, Italian gen generally they're quite laid back, isn't it? Like you know, very warm. Like us out Asians. of the European, they're kind of like I would say like the Bangladeshi vibe people. Yeah. Like you know, yeah, chill out, relax, man. Don't worry, everything is okay. They're laid back. They they've got very strong family values. That the concept of a care home, mm -hmm. it is, doesn't exist. Nah, you nice. look after your own parents until unless they really need that 24 hour assistance so the the values are very similar to our asian sort of values yeah yeah that's what i felt because we deal with a lot of the suppliers from from mm -hmm. europe and you know uh, italy specifically and you could see from the yeah. from the from the behavior and you know how they kind of carry themselves like very chilled out chilled, very relaxed yeah. I, I like it it's it's nice it's nice so one way flight to london yeah. <laughs> How what was that the first time you were flying or you've been flying back and forth between Bangladesh and you know maybe uh, no, Italy? it wasn't the first time. We had been to Bangladesh a few times mm -hmm. before that. Uh we probably were going like every 3 to 4 years cuz it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, that was uh we were very excited going to London, going to meet my uncle. Holiday, yeah. yeah holiday, I'm going to meet my uncle had a baby, I'm going to meet him. Mm -hmm. And next thing I know, we're buying school uniforms. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of shock. But do you regret it though? Subhanallah, it's is probably was the best decision my parents took. Mashallah. The best decision in terms of um, standard of life, opportunities, um, religion-wise. I didn't even know how to pray when I came. I learned everything here in the UK. Where are you gonna find the madrasa in in Milan? In Italy. Yeah, is there none? Where are you going to find the, uh, the kaida books? Wow. In the 90s, I'm talking about the 90s. Wow. Halal food? Non-existent. No, no. 
So now, yes, it's a different story, but I'm talking about the 90s. So alhamdulillah, uh, looking back, it was hard. I probably was depressed the first two years I was here. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I can see, if you see pictures of me in year, year eight and year nine, that's not a happy kid. <laughs> I, was, I was missing the amazing childhood that I had in Italy, the friends and the great sun, so the, the weather, out and about all day, every day, no worries about crime or anything like that. We had an amazing childhood, alhamdulillah. So why didn't you go back? Well, obviously, as a 13-year-old, I can't go back As in, like, you know, when you had well, the opportunity. Well, th this is interesting, right? I would never go back to Italy now. I would never, ever go there to live. I've been very often as a, for holiday. I would never go back there to live because the Islamic infrastructure, mm -hmm. the cultural infrastructure, uh, the opportunities here are... Uh, there's no comparison. Unbeatable, yeah. Yeah, no comparison. The UK is 30 years ahead of every other European country. You know, I comes. say like you know, the food in London is, is amazing. It's like they probably make pizza better than the Italian themselves in London. Mm. I, I, okay, you may, you ah. may disagree with this one, but no, generally right. the quality you, of food is so good. You can go here and have amazing Italian food and you turn around and you go to a Malaysian place. Yeah. Then you turn around and you can have a French pastry. It's incredible. London really is a special place. 100%. 100%. Yeah, really place. Now, going back to your fear that you mentioned, yeah. um, not li not doing enough for Akhira. Yeah. At what point did that get instilled in you? Or was it a self-discovery? Because obviously mm. you weren't brought up in an mm. Islamic environment, from mm. what I understand. Absolutely. So in the early days, this want and drive to do and achieve was because of how hard my parents were working. Mm -hmm. Both my parents, mom and dad, mm -hmm. working, low paid jobs, long hours. So there was always this drive of, I need to start earning and mm -hmm. I want to start helping them and eventually retire them as soon as mm -hmm. I can. Then that, that was very early on. Mm -hmm. That's why I worked so hard at school. Mm -hmm. I tried to go get the best grades, go to the best uni because I just wanted the you know the dream of every working class family right somewhere along the line alhamdulillah allah guided me i saw the beauty of the deen and i started studying and uh, becoming more and more active and that's when i started meeting a lot of important mentors who then instilled certain things in me and i, I, I would see them all they would do is think about how can i benefit others mm -hmm. how can i make a contribution how can i do more and I think I kind of absorbed some of that. And um, at what I'll age are we talking about? Predominantly during university. Okay. During university, I was very active with the Islamic society. I was very active with my local masjid, mm -hmm. football club, this, that. There was a lot of things I was trying to do. Okay. Um, and I think I was also probably addicted, and this is me being very honest, to that feeling of fulfillment. Mm hmm that feeling that, oh, we've achieved something, we've done something, we've made a difference. Mm -hmm. So that was um, probably something that was playing a part there okay. as well. And obviously you must have noticed the transition or transformation that you're going through, mm -hmm. you know, when you maybe discovered the Islamic society and then all the new kind of beliefs yeah. or new ideas mm -hmm. or ideologies come about. Did you notice them? Did you, was, was there a noticeable difference by yourself? In terms of the different ideologies, yes, yes. oh yes, I've been through the whole roller coaster, <laughs> the whole, and I sat with the Salafis, I sat down with the Brelvis, I sat with the Sufis, I sat down with everyone. It didn't matter to me. It was like, if I can learn something from you, they'll benefit me. And I guess I was searching, like, we're all Muslim, but mm -hmm. we all seem to have a very particular way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously I'm trying to figure out how do I be the best Muslim that I can be? How do I improve day on day? Who can show me that path? Mm -hmm. So I was searching for a long time as well. So where do you sit now? I mean, in terms of, uh, uh, maybe this is something that you might not want to answer, but no. in terms of your ideology, like, you know, where do you see in the whole spectrum, Salafi, Hanafi, you know, Hanbali, Maliki, <laughs> where, where, where so are you? From a fake perspective, mm -hmm. Hanafi. Okay. Fake perspective, Hanafi. And I think what people want to know is, okay, are you like more on the Salafi side? Or are you more on the Sufi side? And to be honest, I didn't even know what a Sufi was. Okay. I discovered it when I went to Egypt for the first time. Okay. And it's Juma. we finished prayers. Next thing I know, 
Uh, this is in the masjid opposite Al Azhar mm-hmm. uh, in the uh, masjid of Imam mm-hmm. Hussein. Flags coming out, people sitting around mm-hmm. doing dhikr, reading Quran, drums. All the yeah. I was like, what's, what's happening? Oh my yeah. God. Because in London, there's a there's a strong Salafi presence. And even in universities, mm-hmm. there's, there's that thing of, you know, be careful. This could be bid'ah. Careful about mm-hmm. this, careful about that. Um, I would say now after probably how many years? Probably a decade of searching. Uh, I think I very much appreciate the um, having a methodology and a path with the teacher who has gone through that process yeah. of, and I'm talking about purification, yes. Taskiya. Yeah. Because we have a Quran teacher. You know, your, your brother, he's a Quran teacher. Yeah. He can teach very specific things. Yeah. But where is the teacher that can teach me how do I actually get close to Allah? Because yeah. the knowledge alone is not enough. Okay. The knowledge alone is not 100%. enough, right? Uh, you can study business mm-hmm. for three years. Will, you, will that make you a good businessman? No. no. <laughs> so then where is the teacher that can help me train and practice? Train and practice. That's what I was missing for a long time. Okay. And alhamdulillah, over the years, I found some teachers that te- uh, you know, were able to show s- some. And it's basics like, okay, for 30 days, don't, don't sin with your tongue. Mm-hmm. And then so move on to other what things. came first, business or education? I mean, For, in, 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 your mm, kind of, in, in the whole yeah. kind of um, timeline. It, it was always education. In year nine, mm-hmm. my aunt took me to Canary Wharf. Okay. And I saw those towers in Canary Wharf. Mm-hmm. And from that day, it was my goal to get a job in those towers. Either HSBC or Barclays. <laughs> <laughs> so you were very specific. From year nine. <laughs> and in year 10, I knew already I need to be doing... I need to be getting into investment banking. I need an economics degree. It has to be from either Cambridge, LSE, and worst case scenario, UCL. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, UCL guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was th- how, imagine year 10, most kids are just busy with the with games or the girlfriends mm. or whatever, mm. right? I'm, I'm just researching what's the highest paid graduate role. Mm. Because at the back of my mind is, I'm seeing my parents still doing 12 hour shifts I need to. You can't go on like this. I, I need to start earning a, as much as I can, as quickly as I can. But my whole life, everyone only gave me one option, which is career. Career. S- do well with your studies, get a good job. No other path was ever shown to wow. me. Although I actually was, I showed entrepreneurial flair mm-hmm. from a young age. I was always buying and selling. I was buying and selling cars. I was refurbishing That's what I meant. Like, where did that, where did, where did business <laughs> entrepreneurship come before education or with education? It, so you were doing was wheeling and dealing, you yeah. know, selling sweets in school? It, did sweets, you do that? I was selling uh, designer bags to teachers. Wow. Forget sweets. How that's, daring. That's easy game. <laughs> <laughs> I was selling stuff to teachers. Uh, subhanallah. Uh, so it was always there. I never noticed it because my focus was on I need to get a good job. Do you feel, obviously, from what you're saying, it, it seems like, you know, it, it just gets buried, like, you know, because of that framework yeah. that we we have, like, job, you study hard and you go into a job. It's like, it's, it's a set formula for life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's a good formula, but it's not the best formula. Because what I want to tell Muslims is don't just aim to have a good job, aim to be a good employer. Mm. Why, why are we thinking small? Aim to be a good employer. Yeah, that but just nobody ch- ever says that to us. Yeah, that just changes the whole kind of perspective yeah. and shifts your thinking Completely. from an employee yeah. to now, okay, now how do I become an employer? And I think us as sort of ethnic people, mm-hmm. where we have a double disadvantage because mm-hmm. firstly, society around us wants us to be clogs and wants us to be employees. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, we have the migrant mentality, which obviously is... Just do what's, uh, you know, just get a good job and be stable. And do you feel like it was more, you know what, that's just the safest thing to do. Like the safest is the only thing that is guaranteed. It's a guaranteed way. Safe. You have to be safe, bro, when you're leaving everything from, yeah. you, ha- you can't pl- risk it. Yeah. You can't risk it, right? And it's understandable. My parents, they've always worked. No one in my family was ever in business. All they knew was if you can become a doctor or something mm-hmm. in finance. Even me good studying economics mm-hmm. was a hard self I had to really convince them. Mm. They re- just wanted me to be a doctor. Wow. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously you, you don't just get the money, you also get status. Yes, which of is something course. Important. Being a doctor is, is a big statement. It's important for 
you know, from people from our background, uh, status and money are two things that obviously we crave because of the the, the poor backgrounds that we come from. And they're things. pre-planning the future ahead, yeah. which is marriage. Yeah. You know, Absolutely, when a marriage doctor, and like, all those you know, things. Yeah. makes things easier, right? So, uh, so now what's crazy is I have doctors, I have senior surgeons coming to me, asking me, Tanim, help me get out of this. Mm-hmm. How do I get out of this? I have had enough. I am fed up. I don't see my family. I have a cap on my income. Um, and my health is deteriorating because I'm working nights. I'm doing mm-hmm. this. I'm doing that. So career is good, but I want the best of the best for me and my woman. So let's so, say So higher. back to back to HSBC and Barclays, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. the towers. Like, what was that spark? There, mu- there must have been something that you saw. You Was it the height that made you feel like, you know, I'm so small and I want to mm. be there and I want to be powerful and I want to be something big? It was probably the, um, there was that which is, wow, this, this is the pinnacle of success, working in one of these towers. Look, you know, these are financial institutions that run the world. And also the fact that they had the highest paying graduate mm-hmm. roles. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I did my research. <laughs> yes, yes. So obviously we will kind of get into your your uh, mentorship or, sure. or how you help entrepreneurs, you know, get into business or potential entrepreneurs. Do you ever turn down on people? Like say, listen, like I don't think you're a right fit to be an entrepreneur because you, you just, it's not for everyone. You see, when I first started, Mm -hmm. I used to be naive and say, look, anyone can be a businessman. Anyone can do this thing. And as I tried helping hundreds of people over the last four or five years, Mm -hmm. I'm realizing it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. No, it's not. I have a brother. My own brother is the opposite of me. He's happy in his nine to five. He just wants to come home. No stress. Fair enough. Entrepreneurship is for those who want more, yeah. those who want to contribute more, those who want to create something and maybe leave some sort of legacy or even if it's generational wealth, leaving something behind. 100%. You got to be hungry. 100%. Stay hungry, stay foolish, as Steve Jobs said. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very powerful statement that I, I remind myself of every mm. day almost. So at the age of 17, well, you're, you went into corporate world. Yes, so that was a big blessing because, uh, and subhanAllah, this is probably one of the best decisions of my life was I'm not going to take loans for university. Why so, was that so? I mean, that everyone does that. Why not? Because like, obviously I j- j- just started practicing and a little bit hardcore. You know, mm, the iman is strong. The iman is, the iman is strong. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, the iman is pure. Mm. There's, you know, it's me against the world type mm-hmm. of thing. And subhanAllah, I said, if I, even if I have to stack shelves in Sainsbury's for a year, mm-hmm. I'll do that for a year, save up, then I'll go to uni. So what What's made you so strong? Like, you know, obviously from what I understand, what well, student loan, you pay it back from once you start earning a certain mm-hmm. figure. Mm-hmm. And if you don't hit that threshold, then you don't yeah. pay, right? Yeah. So why was it so important that I am going to stay away, abstain from this sort of loans? What triggered it? What was that specific thing? Riba. 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 And you must have read somewhere where... Well, uh, the, the loan has riba. Whether, uh, whether you pay it or not, you are signing a contract that mm. says, I agree to pay you this much. Now, if the contract said that you, instead of riba, if it said you need to take a shot of whiskey, mm. I'm telling you nobody would sign No, I'm not going to do that. No one's going <laughs> to no do that. If there's a chance that I might have to do that, no. But guess what? Riba is way worse than alcohol. Is one of the most serious, it's, serious It's been dangerous. described in so many metaphorical it's, way, which is like, I guess some people might find it very strange. Like, mm-hmm. why would Allah kind of, you know, make us? Yeah. Why has the why is there such a strong uh, stance against it? Yeah, is because it's a very unjust thing. It's very unjust if you think about it. Well, and now we're realizing. I mean, with with the world, the way yeah. they have to reset every ten yeah. years. Like you, yeah. know, you know what? Absolutely. We messed up. Messed up. Now yeah. we're gonna yeah. like you know bump the people, and we're gonna start yeah. all over again and do the same thing, Absolutely. and then another ten years reset again. It's a uh, system and, that, that and who's getting work. rich out of this? Oh, we see. It's, a it's, handful, it's, few, mega mm. rich are getting richer at the cost of millions of average people. Allah hates injustice. 100%. And this is a mechanism that allows the injustice to happen. In a very professional, 
civilized yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those banks are basically <laughs> the masters behind it. Yeah, yeah. So how was it, um, the university days, though, before before you kind of went into corporate, which we will, mm-hmm. inshallah, discuss, you know, in terms of uh, which employer you went for. But mm-hmm. um, just briefly tell us about university days. Like, you know, what was it like? I'm sure by then... The freshness has disappeared and you know, <laughs> now you're kind of, of one of them now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there was a period where I was trying to shake off the accent and trying to, you know, trying to be Pretend a cool like, guy. Yeah, Pretend I'm, like I'm, I'm from around here, I'm normal. <laughs> uh, I think probably even now you may f- hear a little bit of an accent. And to be honest, I'm proud of it. It shows, it's my background, it's yeah, my history. I am who I am. Yeah, and and alhamdulillah, I, am. I, I speak five languages. Alhamdulillah. Not many people can say that. So if the English is not quite there yet... Uh, having said that, I did get a star in English. Amazing. It'll be only two years of preparation. Amazing. So it goes to show that um, we're way more capable than what people think. Do you humans. sometimes feel, do you know what, those people that say, oh, your, your accent is this and that, but do you sometimes f- say to yourself, you know what, at least I can speak more accurately than you? Like grammatically and, you know, from an accuracy point of view. <laughs> well, I actually had to study grammar properly, right? Because yes. I had to learn the language from scratch. Yeah. So I think my grammar is pretty strong. But again, you know... Uh, when I was young, obviously, I would it, it would hurt me a little bit. Now, when somebody criticizes me, I'm like, okay, thank you. Does uh, that fuel you? Is that like some kind of a fuel? Like when someone says no to you, and you know, when someone kind of puts you down, do you think, okay, well, I think we'll see. We'll, I will, you know, we'll see who's who in few years' time. Yeah, or something. usually yes. And obviously, I don't want to admit it because obviously it's ego. Yeah. But to be quite honest, sometimes yeah. you have to have pride and ego to direct you in a certain yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I, I feel like way. ego isn't always a bad thing. You mm. have to use it in the right way. Yeah, yeah. you got to channel it. Yeah. You have to channel it, absolutely. And it can be very powerful when channeled 100%. the right way. I think so. And and I think I've used ego in so many cases that profited me in, in the end. So I, I guess... I wouldn't call it ego. Though. I think it's more self-resilience. It's mm. more about, you know, you know what, standing up for something. Yeah, yeah. Fair. And sometimes people will call it maybe ego. But it's a very difficult one. Ego, pride is, you know, how you strike that balance. Yeah. So obviously mm-hmm. you're quite big on uh, self-development. You yes. know, you've read many, 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 many books. Yeah. Um, what would you say the most, the one that left a big mark or, or in your, in your it shaped your thinking? Which one? I picked up my first self-development book. I think I was in year 10. Mm. I went to Waterstones and I saw this book. And he said, think and grow rich. Ooh. I was like, bro, that's the book for me. <laughs> I looked in my pocket, just had about enough money, grabbed it. And I remember reading it. So this is quite young, you know, yeah. I'm in year 10. And bro, you read that book way yeah, before yeah, than yeah. I have. And yes, yeah. that was the first book that I kind of read as well. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So, wow. And since then, by the way, now I have a £30,000 a year budget on self-development. 30000 a year. This I could get a nice car, but I choose instead to drive an Astra and have a budget, healthy budget for personal development. Uh, because this is another thing I learned is you got to work on the man before you work on the mm-hmm. empire. But anyways, that, that was the book that I picked up. And mm-hmm. I remember one chapter very vividly, the one about burning desire. Oh, yeah, you man. have to have burning desire. And when I look back, I don't think I would have the same desire to succeed and, and achieve if I had come from a comfortable background, mm-hmm. if I hadn't seen my parents work so hard, live, you know, they built a life in Italy, mm-hmm. sold everything, started from zero again in the UK. This difficult um, background is what gives us the burning desire. So now that I have a son, I'm asking myself, how will I instill a burning desire in him? Because yeah. he's two years old and he's living way more comfortably than... <laughs> He, he, he's basically experiencing That's life a fear, at, at the right? peak That's of That's a fear for, a fear, for you yeah. as a father because yeah. like you want him to be a photocopy of you or something. Uh, hopefully better. <laughs> Inshallah, or better. Hopefully exactly, better. exactly. Hopefully so, better. So that burning desire thing uh, it, it has always played in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. And it's actually in line with what most uh, success coaches talk about now is that you, have a, you need to have a strong why. That why will drive you through 100%. the difficult days, the difficult years, and the, you know, the, the period. Business is like this, nothing, 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 and then slowly starts accelerating, mm. and then it's like, whoa, what's happening mm. now? Yeah. <laughs> Most people will give up in the first two, three years of yeah. nothing. Yeah. But if you have a strong why, like, I have to retire my mom. Yeah. 
then the, you can't afford to give up. There's no way you can give yeah. up, can you? So subhanallah, that, that's something that I would like. Hey guys, I hope you have been enjoying today's episode. I personally have been and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now let's get back straight into the show. Like so Think and Grow Rich is a highly, highly recommended yeah, book. Absolutely. And, and I guess that's one that most of the entrepreneurs have read yeah. in, in, uh, at some yeah. point in their life. Yeah. Generally right at the beginning. Now, from an Islamic point of view though, Think and Grow Rich book doesn't really quite align with some of the, some mm. of the things that it talks about. Of course, of course, of course. Like, um, I think when it comes to Qadr and, you know, we believe in yeah, Taqdeer yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know, all of that. But things then like, again, uh, with Think and Grow Rich is more things. kind of like, you know, like maybe they talk about Akida, but in, in their own way. Like yeah, in and it's going to be wrong because yeah. they're not, they don't have the correct understanding, mm. right? And this is what I found with the per, per, uh, personal development industry mm-hmm. is... 80% of it is fantastic, yeah. 20% is problematic. Yes. And that's why I started creating content is because we need to bring out the 80% that's good yes. and then fill the other 20 with the Islamic stuff. Yes. And that's kind of what I've been trying to do for the last, I would say maybe three years. Um, so, you know, you, you may have heard of programs like Tony Robbins yes. and there's programs like Millionaire Minds um, uh, Millionaire Mindset Intensive I go to all of these things oh you actually and I'm go like, to the wow. programs I go yeah I just did a Tony Robbins one wow <laughs> um, and I go there and I'm noticing the same thing 80% phenomenal it would change everyone's life but there's 20% that's like oh my god this is shirk. Yeah, uh, this is I need like, to get out of this room right yeah, now. Yeah. So I can't tell you, brother, come with me. Yeah. It will change your life. Yeah. Because some things, even the environment, loud music, whatever. Yeah. So we need to recreate. Islamify it. Islamify it. And once you add the Islamic stuff, that program will be even more powerful yeah. than what Tony Robbins has. Yes, 100%. So that's 100%. kind of something that I'm hoping to work towards. Uh, so do creator. you see yourself as a Tony Robbins maybe in maybe five, ten years time? You um, maybe more so of like a Mind Valley type of... Yeah, more, I think Mind you Valley kind of like, you know, you, ha- you have that similarity, you know, yeah. you look quite similar <laughs> to him as well. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, Tony Robbins, yeah, I take inspiration from him. You know, the man has been delivering workshops and changing people's lives for 40 years. Wow. Uh, the event I went to, in it was in the NEC in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. There was 10,000 people. That is mad. Live, 30,000 online. That is crazy. Imagine the impact. He's changed the lives of a million people in 170 countries. That is impact. He, he owns 112 companies. And he uh, feeds people on Thanksgiving every year. He started off with one family. Uh, this last year, he, uh, his donation was 30 million. Imagine this brother was a Muslim. <laughs> My question is, where's the Muslim equivalent of this guy? Yeah. Where is it? Uh, and maybe we need to... Why is, it, why is it? Why, why is it that we don't have it? Is it because we're too busy with ourselves? Or is it because... I mean, wh- why why don't we have? Or is it because we get too ahead of ourselves too early and then we kind of fell, fall Possibly, flat yeah. on our face and then nothing to show for in the end? I think there's a, it's a co- combination of all those things. All of those things. If you think about, you know, what is the one person who has the most impact in the Muslim world, you come up with some names of some scholars. Mm-hmm. Mufti Meng, Noman Ali Khan. Great. What are the... Coaches and the business. Where are the Steve Jobs and and yeah, and you know Tony Robbins and Jim yeah. Rohns and the Zig Jim Ziglar's? Rohn. Yes. Yeah, those guys. Where are they? Yes. And by the way, a lot of what they say is actually very spiritual. Yeah. Tony, Tony Robbins talks about God and the, the the universe didn't come out of nothing. Trusting God, all of these things. They're quite Christian. Like from Jim yeah, Rohn yeah, is yeah, a yeah. very Christian yeah, 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 yeah. Um, exactly. guy and. Exactly. and he always talks about Bible. And obviously yeah. for me in, in that, when he talks about Bible, I'm like kind of referring to Quran or, yeah. or some of the values of Quran. And which in most <coughs> of the time, they're the same thing. They, yeah. they, they overlap. Yeah. They overlap. I've got a couple of books in my library um, about business secrets from, mm-hmm. from, from, a, from a rabbi wrote it. Business secrets mm. or 10 commandments of money from the Bible written by a rabbi. Amazing. And when I read them, I'm like, Bro, we got the same thing in the Quran, but it's way more eloquent than yeah. what you it's way more eloquent. And my question is, okay, where is the e- equivalent for Muslims? It Have you noticed exist. something? 
on audible and maybe that's something biz- uh, business mm. idea that you might need to you focus <laughs> on into. like there's no books like in in audible like that are islamic but yeah. at the same time in line with the kind of the contemporary world it's like Absolutely. i search for it it's like there's only like two or three that comes up this, so this is where we need to do a lot more work a lot more work so this is where me as a businessman I need to decide, okay, do I carry on building my empire, focusing on it, mm-hmm. or do I dedicate 80% of my time to create content, create programs, mm-hmm. travel the world, deliver workshops? So th- there is a decision that needs to be made here. And, and um, that is something that I was going to ask you as well. Yeah. Like Now, obviously, you have a very kind of, you're quite um, very strong on the property side of things and you know how to make money from mm-hmm. property. But then again, obviously, you've got the education side. Mm-hmm. Now... Where are we heading? Like, is it going to be more of education and the property is just a kind of foundation to just kind of keep you moving? Subhanallah. Where and, are and we? This is something I am battling with every day because if I really focus on this property thing, we can really take it somewhere, inshallah. Um, so somewhere where I'm talking about international level, mm-hmm. I'm talking about nine, ten figures. Mm-hmm. In the, it may take some time, but I think it's possible. But if I'm busy running workshops, I just spend the weekend teaching uh, and money workshops for 17 year olds at a Muslim retreat. Mm. Now, if I'm busy doing that, or if I'm busy, you know, recording podcasts and this and that, then something's going to have to give. Yeah. So then the question is, how do you do both? How can you do both? And what, what I'm sensing and what my mentors are saying to me is, you got to leverage. You gotta play with leverage. So why can't your business grow without you? You're not using the right leverage. And how can you use leverage in the content creation? So this is where I'm now very, very uh, strong on partnerships, on business partnerships, on finding people to work with. Mm. Finding people to work with. So all of my mentees who I have been coaching, I've now turned them all into business partners that we're going to build this empire together. I taught you how to build your own nice little portfolio. Mm -hmm. Now let's build something together. So I think, and this is again coming from where? From the mentoring that I'm investing in, right? Mm -hmm. I may spend £5,000 for a program, but it gives me an idea that's going to make me £5 in the next three years. 100%. You read one book, like 16 hours, or you listen. In my case, I listen. listen. I listen. I, I I, I can't read. It puts me to sleep. And I don't you know, know. <laughs> each to their own, right? I like to listen when I'm driving yeah. or when I'm doing other stuff. So you, you, there's only a couple of takeaways that you go away with, and you know yeah. that generates yeah. huge sums of kind Absolutely. of uh, returns. So would you say that in that case you are kind of gonna be the Muslim main mind value? What's his name? I can't. I can't. Uh, Vishen Alkani. Yes. Yes. He's another very interesting uh, individual because he's having a great impact and he's built um, an education company, the startup way, which is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Companies valued at 100 million. Wow. And for me, it's not even about that. It's about how many millions of lives are they Mm -hmm. impacting. And I think there is place for a Muslim mind value. I think so. And inshallah... Um, things are lining up now mm-hmm. where I'm meeting a lot of high caliber coaches, have specialism in different things. So we can, uh, I'm also been blessed to come across people who are amazing at marketing. Mm-hmm. So I know how we would launch something mm-hmm. like that. So I think once you have the intention, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the, a lot of it, Allah will, will help, inshallah. It, it usually does Allah happen, isn't it, in, in, yeah, yeah. in that sequence? You know, you yeah. start, you make, you have tawakkul yeah. and you just start. That's it. You do and your the bit. rest somehow miraculously will just come together Something. at the right time. Yeah. And that's something that I've kind of experienced like firsthand over in, and on over my and journey over. with specifically with Firnas, the aviation project that I was involved yes. in. Bro, I did not know what the hell I was doing like right at the beginning. I was calling people and say, yo, like, you know, how much is it to fly to <laughs> Silet with, you know, from London Stancer to the... I'm like, now that I look back, I was like, what a, like, fool. Like, you know, they must have thought, who is this lunatic? Like, and know, a lot just, of people did think that. A lot of people did think this, like, what's who is this guy, guy doing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But they sh- what they should have recognized is the courage and the drive. Because that was, wow. Yeah, literally in in the face of crazy complexity. Yeah, you're just powering through. So yeah, I, I, I'm like I had big tawakkul, and I thought, you know what? Challenge myself. 
And that's what we're lacking nowadays. We just want to play safe. Yeah, too much. Pl- and you know what? That's probably not something that you might want to hear, though. But that's that's kind of property, guys, though, isn't it? Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, kind yeah. of play it safe, yeah, keep yeah, you on the it low. Is. Like, and I love building consumer brands like that are yeah. customer facing, public facing, yeah. because you have that kind of interaction and you have that profile as well. So it's interesting you say that because you're completely right. Property is the safe place. And that's why I got into it is because nothing else was working for me. (laughs) And I was like, man, I just need somehow if I can get two grand a month coming relatively passively, then I can focus on all this teaching and this and that because this doesn't pay (laughs) very well. And some days sometimes you get paid, sometimes you don't get paid. So I was like, okay, I need to set something up that's dependable, that is recurring, that is safe that is long term minimal input and that's kind of how how i started it uh, the intention was mm. to i'm just going to make this a passive income and carry on doing what i'm doing uh, and then i saw that actually hold on this mm-hmm. is actually can go far yeah. and then subhanallah mm. the rest um the rest was uh, just literally blessing upon blessing and just accelerating things happening unexpectedly people coming in my life that were the right person at the right time uh-huh. on the right day and uh, yeah just every day i feel the blessings but don't get me wrong three and a half years i was broke <laughs> broke <laughs> struggling uh, all my friends looking at me telling him bro just go get a job bro pack Come it on. in pack it in it's been enough i remember one good friend of mine sat me down one day after the mosque <laughs> sat me down he's like bro i think it's enough I think I think it's time now. If you've done enough. You've done enough. Because they see me one week, I'm doing this, another week, I'm doing that. I've probably been in and out of it, about 13 businesses. Tried. And, uh, and the first year, I was working for mentors to learn. Mm. I didn't start anything on my own. I was working with them to learn and absorb. And yeah, uh, property was the safe play. And now I'm realizing, hold on. If I can do 2K a month, maybe I can do 10. Mm-hmm. If I can do 10, maybe we can do 50. If I can do 50, maybe we can do 100, and we're so on about 500 So it's a multiplication a game. One, yeah, once yeah, you've yeah. kind of established yeah, scalable, that founder, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. scalable. And then, as you know, in business, once you're through a particular threshold, a lot of opportunities start to come. Uh, and the growth kind of accelerates. Mm-hmm. Like your first branch maybe took a long time. Yeah. Now you're opening branches, it's multiple like, branches yeah, a month or paste, a year. Copy, or paste, copy, paste, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, yeah. copy, paste, right? Yeah. Once you've got the formula going, you know, it's... But to get to that formula, it's like it may That's seem very one. easy. <laughs> you know, it's a bottle of you know perfume on a on mm. a stand or a kiosk or a concession in Westfield. How did that get there? How did it get there? Yeah, and how will it keep getting there? Yeah, and how will you keep selling it? It's like sometimes I was talking to one of my colleagues on the way back from Manchester the other day. I said, "Listen, that car we're driving is such a blessing. Like, imagine you had to create that car mm. yourself. Yeah, like how much money would we have had to spend? Like, mm. we're sitting here, you know, in rain." You know, comfortable, comfortably. you know, nice heating. You just have on. to turn it on, that's it. And the value, like you buy, you pay maybe 40 grand and, you know, it's going to last you a lifetime almost yeah, if yeah, you keep yeah. it. So yeah. it's like, same with the with the products, right? You know, getting to that stage is difficult, but once mm. you've got yeah. there and that takes persistence and coming back to that Think and Grow Rich book, it talks mm. about Prophet Muhammad and Does his it? persistency. If you, if you kind of like, maybe you might have kind of like, you know, overlooked it, but uh, towards the end, it talks about Prophet Muhammad and Khadija, the story of Khadija. Because he was talking about how you should be persistent. And it referred to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like, you know, as someone who has been an example of what persistency could do. And yeah, he, at one point, Islam was, was the kind of, you know, it was leading the, the default. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the blueprint for success. Blueprint. And it still is. Yes. Like I'm working on a series of, a uh, short series mm-hmm. of Muslim business secrets. Because I think our faith gives us so many things that are an ad- advantage in business compared to those who don't have them. Uh, but it's like a lost treasure. Is there, but no You know, the really non-Muslim there. businesses do it more than us. They do it better than us. Like if you go to Argus, you, like mm-hmm. shop in peace. Like, you know, if you don't want it, take it back. Don't <laughs> take it back. Try doing that with a, with a with, I yeah, guess, yeah. one of our, not just Muslim, but anyone that is originating yeah. from, from our kind of culture. It's a different mentality. Yeah. So that's part of it is re-educating the mind, re-educating people. But what I'm realizing, a lot of, 90% of success is in here. Yeah. It's my mindset, how you think about things, how, what your values are, 
how you plan things, what your objective is. It's like the steering wheel, like, you know, it's, it really yeah. is the steering wheel, like, you know, it, di- dr- like, it controls yeah. which yeah, way yeah, you're yeah. going. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. honestly, like, you know, if I could tell someone, then yes, work on your mind, work on your brain, work, not just, mm-hmm. not brain, actually, brain is just a computer, right? It just yeah. does what you tell it to do. But it's a mind yeah. that is a mix of what your feelings and emotions and the life so experiences. Yeah. So to kind of get that into a good shape is, is very important for, in my opinion, you know, before going into business. Now, what was your, I mean, you've got various businesses. Would you mind mm. kind of sharing like, you know, how many and what, what, what do each of them do? Sure. So right now we actually, uh, well, I decided to focus exclusively on property. Okay. Forget everything else that I'm doing. Okay. Let me do one thing and do really, really well. Yes, absolutely. So we, uh, I was blessed to have an amazing business mm-hmm. partner who came in. And he basically runs that show, which has freed me up to do what I love doing, which is the teaching. Mm. So Alhamdulillah, for the last two, two and a half years, I've basically been focusing on how can I teach others the very simple business strategy that we have here in London that's working so well. How can we do this in Manchester? How can we do this in Glasgow, Brighton, Leicester, Sheffield? Mm. Uh, So I've been basically uh, running my own academy. Mm -hmm. And that has been a journey because, mm. you know, alhamdulillah, um, when you're running an academy, it's still a business, right? So mm. you, you still have to figure out your marketing. Mm. You still have to figure out your sales and whatnot. Mm. So, I mean, that is a seven-figure business mm-hmm. in and of itself. What's better, the property or um, They're very coaching. different beasts because okay. the property, mm-hmm. the income is recurring. Mm. So it's safe. It's just there. Like it's going to kind of it's taking do over, things, Taking yeah. over, taking over. You just need a bit of maintenance. Yeah. Where, whereas on this side, the profit margin is much higher, but you, you got to keep finding the next client, yeah. keep investing in marketing. Yeah. So I always wanted my base to be recurring. Okay. So I'm, I'm chilling. So you're kind of like basically without, uh, maybe you don't realize or notice that you are kind of going for, for that, you know, uh, coaching, you know, the Tony, yeah. you know, Tony Robbins, uh, yeah, you know, so kind of approach. Interestingly, so Alhamdulillah, that's been going on for a while. And now I'm becoming more interested in, and, and inshallah, uh, what's happening now is the both businesses are merging because now all of the mentees that I had mm-hmm. are now business partners. Mm-hmm. So we're taking our brand nationwide. Um, I am dedicating quite a bit of time mm-hmm. to content creation and ed- educating. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and I think once um, I'm able to stabilize things, we I will start doing a lot more on the uh, personal development space, inshallah. Mm-hmm. But yes, yeah, so there's, um, there's the property management business. There is the academy. Uh, but there's a few other small operational companies in there as well. There's a marketing company, then there's a furniture company in there. <laughs> there's cleaning, probably not because it's a headache. So there's sort of things that start taking shape within. So you're kind um, of creating your own ecosystem yeah, yeah, that yeah. supports, supports the, that, yeah. the, the overall business. Yeah, because yeah. the thing is, we can you support our portfolio. And it can also, we can also offer that to our mentees mm. as well as all of the other agents and landlords that we work with. Mm. So it's kind of a no-brainer to do that. So how many properties would you guys say you, you have under management or, or, or on your portfolio? So we specialize in HMOs. Okay. So they are basically five, six, seven bedroom properties, eight bedrooms. The biggest we have is 17 bedrooms. Wow. And we basically turn them into beautiful high-end uh properties that corporate professionals can rent and 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 live in so you know like a house share for corporate mm. professionals so we have about i think 40 of those mashallah uh, so 40 of those um it's about 250k a month in rental income that we amazing uh, that we bring in obviously not all of that is profit uh, a big chunk of that is obviously the rent that we would pay the landlords because we're basically taking the property from a landlord yeah. And then doing what we need to do with that. And, and the fees of the platforms that you might use or something? Um, very minimal. Very minimal. Very, very minimal. Because we don't use Right Move and Zoopla, okay. none of that stuff. Because um, it's rooms. So okay. it's spareroom.co.uk does the job. Okay, nice. nice. So that's that. But now we've started uh, other, other stuff. So overall, um, it's close to half a million a month in revenue. Amazing. So spare rooms. Like, so what does it do? So if I ever get thrown out of my house... Can I go on spare rooms and find a spare room instead of... Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. So, look, um, not just London, but let's let's use London as an example. Mm. 
people come to work here in London from all over the world, yeah. from all over the UK as well. When they come, most people probably don't want to spend all of their salary on a one or two bed flat. Yeah. So the only reasonable option is, let me rent a room and in a nice property with nice people. But guess what? The problem is there aren't that many nice rooms with nice, nice, <laughs> with nice people. people. So we're just basically creating that solution. So how do you kind of verify and vet who's going to stay in that property? Do absolutely. you kind of look at the yeah, profile? Yeah, yeah absolutely. We, uh, the full works. Most of our tenants are professionals okay. coming from other countries or other cities who got a good job in London. They need a nice room. And they don't, pay, they don't mind paying a bit more for a nice, well-maintained yeah, property, gotcha. well-furnished property. Understood, understood. Now, imagine mm. I'm a guy, I'm a mentee now. I don't have a clue what's going on, you know, and I come to you for advice. Where mm. would you start with me? I would make you watch or attend my four-hour free workshop where I explain everything. So what the, the way I like to do it is let me give you every piece of information that you need to have to figure out if this is for you or this is not for you. I teach life for four hours twice a month for wow. free. Four hours. I show them everything, the model, case studies, numbers, calculators, research data, everything. Most people just basically run a Facebook ad and try and get you to buy the program. Yeah. So after that, if you think you can see yourself doing this, fantastic, and you've done the research and everything, you then got to apply. Mm. There's an application form. And my first question is, why do you want to start a business like this? Because for me, the why is the most important question. Then they have an interview with my mm -hmm. partner, and then they get a chance to join the program. So we're very, very, very selective. Mm. Um, because it's not for everyone. And I'm not interested in having 500 mentees who I know are not, not, not going to do well. As a waste of my time. Because ultimately waste of it's going to backfire on you and they're going to go and say, oh, this stuff doesn't work. Doesn't work. And I, I'm getting questions from people that are just asking me basics all the time. Waste of my time as well. Yeah. I want to work with champions. I want to work with A players. So if someone says, look, I don't want to do HMO stuff. I don't want to like kind of go down that line. Yeah. I want to go maybe set up another business, maybe a hair salon or something. Mm. Would you say, look, this is not really kind of what I do? Um, would you say, you know what? I, I'll, I'll help where I can, but I can't take you on. 100%. So this is the transition I had to make before I was trying to help anyone. Okay. Anyone and everyone. And my success rate was very low. Because yeah. obviously, it's some of these ideas may take three or four years to... Yeah. <laughs> what I realized is, hold on, the few people that I'm coaching one-to-one -one this property thing, they're getting results straight away. So why don't I just focus on this? Yeah. This works. Yeah. Yes, it may not be as sexy or as exciting, but it works. People are becoming financially free. People are leaving their jobs. Tomorrow I'm having lunch with mom and T. He's treating me to lunch because he just hit 50 rooms. So he's on about 5K a month. Mashallah, wow. mashallah. This Amazing. is like, yeah, five profit, not revenue, profit. And he's now thinking, should I leave my job or not? <laughs> <laughs> so imagine I've done your four hours program or, or I've watched all the kind of uh, contents from you. Mm. Where do I go next now? Do I have to put money in or, or, or what do you say? You got to apply. Mm -hmm. If all goes well, there is, of course, an investment. There is, of course, an investment. I'm not going to do this for free. Could be, it used to be a very low, mm -hmm. two grand, mm -hmm. and I would help you for six months. Okay. So uh, when people heard how much help I was giving, uh, my mentors, they were, they were started laughing like, what's going on? I have mentors in America as well mm -hmm. who do like 100K a day in terms of this type of business. As we started learning more and developing the program mm -hmm. more and getting more and more mm -hmm. and more success, the price kept going up and up and mm -hmm. up. Now I don't have a coaching program anymore. You, if you want to work with me, you join as a partner, almost like a franchisee. Mm -hmm. So you need to have 20, 30K to play with. As an investment towards the kind of business that you're yeah, going yeah, to do? Yeah, start, to start as well and be part as, of. As uh, kind of your fees for the program? Everything, or? everything, okay. everything, yeah. And that's the difference. You know, somebody that comes to you with two grand, Mm. Somebody that comes to you with 20 grand is a big difference in them as a person. Mindset, how far, mindset discipline, mm -hmm. hunger. And I'm seeing that difference. Like most of my mentees, they'll mm -hmm. get comfortable at two, three, four grand a month. And that's it. I'm looking for people who want to be millionaires mm -hmm. and, and build 
uh, an empire with me, inshallah, and show the world mm -hmm. we've done it without a single penny of interest. No, that's very interesting. You know, um, it is, I guess, I think for a lot of people, that is a good option because going kind of into the unknown or retail yeah, and yes, man. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> aviation, man, like, you know, you it's don't want to, you don't want to kind of it's hard. delve too, too much into kind of unknown territories. And especially when it comes to testing a model or testing an yeah, idea, yeah. your, your stuff, I think it, it makes a lot of sense for anyone mm -hmm. that's coming out of corporate job. Exactly. And, is and that, that transition, transition phase? That transition. Because yes. I believe uh, one of the things that makes me really sad is the best talent of the Ummah is stuck in those big companies. You know, sometimes I wish I could say to these people, listen, man, what are you doing there? Like, you're meant to support the, the ummah, come and use your knowledge. Yeah, but they got bills to pay. Exactly. So then if we can show them how to make three to 5K a month mm. on the side of their job, they're free now. They can make that jump. It's not scary anymore. So but sometimes, so we, now that obviously we're a big employer, so no mas, you know, we, we, mm. we're employing about 300 something plus, plus people. Um, and, and we need those people to, to, to come and join us, you yes. know, not just, you know, Deloitte and not just, uh, HSBC. I mean, we're an option as well. Yeah. And, and I think it would be interesting to, to, because I feel like, you know, some people, they stay away on purpose, maybe, I don't know. You know, I think actually they would love mm. to work for Sunnah Mosque, but mm -hmm. they're looking for a good package. They're looking for the good benefits. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the people in corporate, uh, they struggle to pray. They struggle with uh, the free mixing, with, you know, the drinks after work. Mm. They would love an Islamic environment. I mean, they would love it. Mate, we're, we're like, we're <laughs> a serious <laughs> employer right now. I yeah. mean, and, and okay, we might not be able to give you that bupa kind of medical yeah. cover and all of that. But, but the other benefits. The foundation yeah. Yeah, level, yeah, yeah. yes, of course. I think this is uh, another hope of mine that as we as business, Muslim business owners level up, we'll be able to bring a lot of this talent and free them and give them. So you know, in our, our office, uh, alhamdulillah, we only have you know seven employees, but we take everybody on Umrah every year. That's Amazing. the package. Mashallah. That's part of the package. Mashallah. Uh, salary is on par. It's not going to be above market. It's on par. We make sure everybody is incentivized with bonuses. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that always works. Yeah, and we're two minutes from Masjid. Fridays, nobody works. So there's those things where you can't find anywhere. Amazing. So I think that's how we're going to attract... Mm -hmm. And if you go on my TikTok, I think I have two, 230 people asking me, how can I work for you? But the question is like, what have you got to offer? Yeah. Right. Uh, if I need a specific skill set, unless you have that, it's very hard for me or to just. Or could it be that? Are you, are you as a t uh, Tanim Zaman, yeah. are you growing fast enough to be able to take those people on quickly? Exactly. Uh, we're not. Not at this moment, but it's also a case. So, I mean, so, some of these people are uh, 16 year olds. So yeah, okay. So, yeah, you need to, to understand. Kind of, so, you need to wait a bit. You, yeah, 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 we get the loads of applications, you know. Oh, I'm not so. ready to work yet, yeah, but can I work in one year's time? I'm like, yep, yeah, inshallah, <laughs> yeah, whenever yeah. you're ready, you know, reach out to us. Now, what would be that? I guess I want to finish off with a with couple of things. Drawbacks. Mm -hmm. do, you find, do you face any challenges in, in what you do? I mean, what are, I mean, halal. I guess trying to do this in a halal way, but what, what, what are the challenges? In the property side? Yeah. The, uh, we, we have to be honest. Um, there is obviously a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you leave something for his sake, he will replace it with better. And I've seen this in my life over and over and over and over again. So there's only uh, we can only benefit from leaving. Mm -hmm something however there are some challenges like for example it would be much easier for me and my team to just get guaranteed rent insurance mm -hmm. and uh, remove that risk of voids completely but we're not doing that because of you know the sharia gray area around it yeah. and and inshallah allah is the one that provides inshallah i mean i, I hope um i mean it, we're in this on the same boat, you know, trying to yeah. keep everything halal, keep it simple. You know, people like English people get shocked, like you know, when they yeah. when they hear like, okay, we operate on our own cash flow, mm -hmm. not the bank's cash flow, or not letter of credit, or not letter of this yeah, or that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's alhamdulillah we're but very blessed. But that's where the baraka is. Absolutely, hundred percent. Now I'm gonna end, inshallah. I know I've, I've been saying that for a few, a few minutes now, um, but you you're a good conversationalist, and I'm enjoying this conversation. <laughs> so is what's your favorite color is, is it brown uh blue actually blue 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 but you kind of appear in a kind of today yeah it's the only only suit that i had that was 
crisp and ready to nice, put on. Nice. Usually I just wear a jumper. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Nothing. Huh? Nothing. Today I was running. Uh, I had just a cup of tea. After Fajr, I had some work to do. Then we had some meetings. Uh, it was been a very crazy day today. Okay, okay. Um, do you recite it when you when you wake up and before you start your day? You know, do you do the recitation and stuff like that? Or yeah, or yeah, yeah. Well, re- is in reciting Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't recite Quran. I try to read the the um, protection of God. Yes, in the morning. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's. I guess that's as as good as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but when I was at uni, thing. I had yeah. a good habit because I was on the tube for fifteen uh, yeah. forty minutes, and you know, Surah Yasin, this, that, mm-hmm. and the whole lot. Now it's just like go, 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 go. But yeah, it's important. If you could live in one place. In this world, particular country, city, um, area, what would it be? Hands down, Medina. Wow. Hands down. Mashallah. No and I hope, I hope that, that I mean, vision I mean, uh, becomes a reality. Inshallah. 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 Um, and, inshallah, if you could be one person, like you could choose anyone, I guess living, anyone living, who would mm. it be that you would pick to, meet to become, or for to you become. to become? Like you could just switch, like you could press a button and you'd switch. Who would it be? Oof. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be Tony Robbins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's hard because the, 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 the religious people we look up to. Okay, imagine you could you know? take your religion with you. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, probably uh, Richard Branson. Yeah, because yeah. the guy is enjoying his life and he's got so how many companies is crazy, right? Like crazy so amount of companies. So it's like that's really what's possible. So let's try and do that, inshallah. Is that, is that, is that something that you're going to become, I, I, inshallah, one I day? I think, yeah, I mean, uh, right now I'm only working three and a half days a week. Mashallah. So I'm basically forcing myself to have that balance. I have a young boy, um, young family. I could easily work seven days. I would love to work seven days a week because mm-hmm. I love it. I easily I could do it, but I'm forcing myself. That's and good. It's a, it's a good discipline. And you got to have. leverage. Yes. So yes. Richard Branson is only doing all of that because of leverage. Definitely, hundred percent. And he has fun along the way as well. And yeah, that is something is that important. I'm trying to kind of like you know get used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having I'm, fun, I'm like you know, creating m- fun. Maybe we can do something together yes, because inshallah. I need to <laughs> find some fun. Hundred well. <laughs> percent. Now, obviously, I did bring a gift with me, but unfortunately, I left it in my office upstairs. Um, it's no, a it's gift from, from 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 us Mashallah. inside by side and Sunnah Thank Mosque. Thank you so much. And inshallah, once this ends, um, I'll go and grab it from my No upstairs. problem. I actually have a Sunnah Mas bottle. It was a wedding gift from my wife. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, it's it's the, my favorite fragrance. And uh, it's finished, but I'm still keeping it because it's well, just I'll like give, sentimental uh, value, you know? Inshallah, it's a mystery gift. And let's see, like, you know, I did say, like, you know, okay, I've got a guest <laughs> coming. Um, just pick something that you think yeah. might be suitable for you. Not so really I haven't not. seen what's in it. Inshallah, not, I hope not. you will enjoy. Sunnah Mas play, you know, it's it genuinely... Uh, your journey as well has been so inspirational. I mean, the Channel 4 documentary, I watched it four times. <laughs> I was like, wow, I need to meet this brother. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, I watch it myself, I'm like, was that me? Like, that, but, that's but, crazy but, stuff. But, but because you're growing mm-hmm. so much, you, I, I don't recognize myself two years ago. I mean, I'm not the same person. And your growth is probably much more because of the crazier stuff um, you're involved. You know what, that's a story, another story for another day. Inshallah, we'll be, uh, definitely meet well, uh, offline you, inshallah. and Inshallah, sure, we'll, we'll sure. catch up. Um, thank you once again Barak for Allah joining Allah. us on Side by Side. And that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed our today's episode of Side by Side with myself, your host, Kazi Shafiq Rahman, and our unique special guest, Tanim Zaman. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And don't forget to also share it with family and friends who might be interested in starting out in business. Jazakallahu khairan. Until then, Assalamu alaikum.